Hi, I'm Doug Beardsley, Director of Engineering at Cadena. Today I want to talk about how to build safer smart contracts with PACT to avoid getting wrecked. Smart contract bugs are causing more and more losses in recent weeks and months. This website, wrecked.news, tracks notable hacks that have resulted in a loss of money and analyzes the details of those attacks. Since the beginning of August, According to Rect.news, at least eight projects have been hacked, totaling 691 million US dollars worth of money stolen. Two of those were caused by human errors, such as publishing private keys on GitHub that have no possible technological remedy. But six were code problems that we can do something about. This state of affairs is unacceptable and it's impeding mainstream crypto adoption. First, existing systems are built on an error-prone foundation. Then, new systems are created by copying and pasting code from old systems, which perpetuates well-known vulnerabilities. Mainstream consumers won't accept this kind of risk, and regulators ultimately won't allow it either. But the bugs keep coming because there are too many details for developers to get right. You just can't hope to get them all. We must attack these problems with technology. Cadena has solutions to these problems. We've built a scalable proof of work blockchain from the bottom up with safety and security in mind. When we looked at the details of these rect.news hacks, we found that 75% of them would have been prevented by Cadena's smart contract language pact. The other 25% didn't have technological remedies, but no system will be perfect. So I would like to take a look at a bug that Cadena encountered and how we were able to protect against it in the future. In 2021, Cadena offered a real money bounty on mainnet for vulnerabilities in our automated market maker and other associated smart contracts. On July 13, a community member successfully identified and exploited a missing access control vulnerability. Just two weeks later, on July 27, we committed an update that not only fixed that bug, but also introduced formal verification infrastructure that can detect and warn about every future instance of this class of vulnerability. Let's take a look at the details of how that works. We need to start by looking at the nature of the attack. As we can see here in the browser, I've searched for the offending transactions in the block explorer, and we can see that the exploit called the update supply function to decrease the supply that the contract thought was in the pool. This meant that the attacker had 100% of pooled tokens and could then withdraw it all to their own wallet. Since this was a bounty, these were test tokens, but they were backed by real KDA that Cadena had put in to fund the bounty. This happened because the update supply function should have been protected and not possible for an external to user, user to run, but it wasn't. Let's look at the code. First, we're going to look at the commit where the problem was fixed. You can see that we added code to the update supply function at the bottom that requires the presence of a capability in order to run, and then grants the capability in the places where the function is called. That's the fix, but the thing I want to look at in more detail is the infrastructure that we put in place to prevent problems like this in the future. We're going to switch over to our code editor here. Now, PACT has a database abstraction that we use to save data between different transactions. The big realization we had was that every balance impacting operation must write something to the database. PACT also has a formal verification system that allows users to prove things about their code. The fact that PACT is not Turing complete greatly increases what this formal verification system can do. We can prevent this kind of problem in the future by using the formal verification system to prove that every DB write is protected by an appropriate access control guard. Let's look at how this is done. We're going to paste two additional property blocks into the code here at the top of the module. There they are. We add these two properties that will be proved by the formal verification system. The first says that for all tokens, whenever a token row is written to the supplies table, an access control check called guard must protect the transaction. 
The second property says that for all keys, whenever a key is written to the ledger table, it must be one of two access control checks. Now, you will inevitably need to write some functions that don't satisfy this requirement. And that is where the accept section comes in. It allows you to specifically define exceptions to the property. One of these exceptions is the update supply function. We can see now that the formal verification has analyzed the code and detected that the update supply function writes to the issuers table, but isn't protected. We can suppress this error by adding update supply to the accept list. That error, as you can see on the screen, is on line 11. And in a moment, you'll see the uh, click on that error location, and it'll tell us that the update supply function is the one that we're missing. And then we will add that to the accept list on lines 15 through 17. So we click on, on the red error message. There we go. And now we can see invalidating model found in swap.tokens.update supply. Now we will add the error message or add the exception. And after we save here, the blinking yellow dot in the bottom of the screen indicates that formal verification is rechecking everything. It's doing a lot of work under the hood, so it takes a little bit. There, now we see that the formal verification error has disappeared. You might note that we didn't make any code changes to actually fix the problem. That is something that you have to do separately. And of course, it's still possible to mess that up. But this list of exceptions serves as a fantastic checklist of functions that engineers and code auditors should scrutinize closely in their reviews. And once they are familiar with PACT, all future auditors will know to make sure that contracts have these properties that check the access control around DB rights. It's impossible to be perfect, but this is about as close as you can get to exactly the right amount of security. I hope this little formal verification demo has been informative and inspires people to demand more from blockchain security. As a final parting thought, since I woke up this morning, I've heard about two more attacks totaling $47 million that weren't included in the above numbers. If you want to hear more, follow me on Twitter or join Kadena's Telegram, Discord, etc. Thank you.